Entering our second season of Blood Time, we want to thank not only our phenomenal and remarkable individuals that were our guests, but also the support, the incredible support that we have had throughout the community, not only locally, but nationally. What you can absolutely put to bed as guaranteed the second season of Blood Time are more remarkable individuals, more transformative stories, and more Blood Time moments. Please give a listen to the second season for we are all blood. Coach Cimarroni here. Love to all. want to thank Brandon and his team at Edwin's Leadership and Restaurant Institute, our newest sponsor. What a marvelous mission. Thank you, Brandon, for bringing these wonderful people back into productive society at Edwin's Leadership and Restaurant Institute. Visit them at 13101 Shaker Square, Edwin's Restaurant. Thank you. Hey, it's Coach Cimarroni here for Blood Time. I've got one of the best guys I've ever been associated with in this sport, a good friend, uh, and the current longtime head coach at St. Ignatius, Mark Sullivan. How you doing, Mark? Peter, good to be here. Oh, man, it's so good to see you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're here. And um, one of the reasons I'm glad that you're here is you're John Carroll Blue Streak. Right. All-American. Right, right. <laughs> and a couple time, right? Two-time. Two-time All-American. Uh, Two-time finalist, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Th- yeah, let's uh, bring that up. Lost in the finals twice in overtime by one point. You know, it's not like I don't think about it every day. <laughs> <laughs> Ten times a day, right? <laughs> I don't think about it every day, right? Exactly, you know. Well, but that was an amazing accomplishment at heavyweight. Right. I mean, uh, you're all about 5'10", right? Yeah, 5'9". Five, 5'9", nine. Five, nine, yeah. five, But you also played a, just a short, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, kind of an easy position. Uh, for Ohio State, middle guard. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. So you have a pretty amazing athletic career, accomplishment-wise. Yeah, it's funny because you know, my, early in my coaching career, I never talked about my accolades or anything I accomplished with sports. Yeah, yeah. But then I found, as the kids got older, they like, hey, you know, we didn't know what you did in college. We didn't right. know what you, right. you know, went through. We didn't, you know, if we would have known that, you know, yeah. we might have listened a little harder. Well, it's all reference, right? I right. mean, like I'm talking to my fiance's son yesterday. He's 21 years old. And he's talking about Trump's lawyer, Giuliani. Right. And he that's all he knows him. <laughs> and this crazy thing that happened on the Borat movie. Right. Look at her. Right. I said, dude, this is America's mayor. This yeah. guy was the mayor of New York City that took New York out of the slums, basically, right. The, right. the horrible situation it was, and then led him through 9-11. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He goes, really? Yeah. So that's, that's I think, what the whole point is, right? Yeah. Well, it's funny. My son, Mark, my yeah. my uh, oldest son, right. lives in New York City now. And, okay. You know, he he gets the benefit from a clean city. Yes, yeah, yeah, back in the day, New well, York City was was pretty bad. Very bad. I mean, and particularly it, like when we were in college or, you know, in our 20s, it was right. horrible. I mean, right. the 70s and 80s were horrible. Right. You, you yeah. didn't want to walk on the sidewalks because you had to kick rats out of your way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, needles or, you know. The thing I found or, most, yeah. probably most annoying, I don't know if it was annoying, but uh, when I drove there, mm-hmm. he knows I don't like going there just, okay. be- just because of the traffic. Right. People, you know, it's illegal to honk the horn. Oh, how funny. I mean, it was like, at first, the strangest thing, but then it right. made sense because, yeah. you know, everybody in New York City back in those, uh, the movies. Oh, my God. It was like, it, meh, meh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. It's, it was like uh, a cacophony of horns, right? But it's still, uh, you know, bumper car, oh, you know, yeah. bumper yeah. car mania trying yeah. to, to merge. Except you know? except during the pandemic, what you're going through right now, it's it's almost like right. eerie, like a science fiction movie, right? Right, yeah. yeah it's crazy. Right. But, but, yeah, getting back to your point, I think it's really important. I remember... When I took over Beachwood uh, for the second time in 14, I had some amazing guys on staff, Alf, Alan Freed, you know, and uh, but some other guys, Matt Morgan, and, you know, Greg Morgan. I said, tell the kids about yourself. It's not bragging if it's fact. Right. And they have to have some reference as to why you are who you are and what they can learn from you. You're right. Am I right? What I've found is when I bring in uh, guest clinicians, sure, I'll take the time to detail what they did, like when that. they did it how they did it, and what they're doing now. 
you know, right. just so the kids can get a, a grasp of, you know, who they're who they're dealing with. Sure. Kids love to see or listen, you know, high school kids, which, yeah. which I've been coaching forever. You've been coaching forever. Yes, indeed. You know, right. yeah. it's hard to get their attention sometimes. It is. They're like squirrels, you know. Like yeah. they're, they're listening one minute and the next minute they're thinking about their their, their phone or right. their whatever the Snapchat, whatever the latest yeah. thing is. Yeah, robotics, TikTok, so, whatever. Yeah, so if like you that. can get their attention, right. you know, for a minute and explain who's there, why they're there, and how they're going to help them. Yeah. You know, it really may, it means a lot more to these kids. And I know that St. Ignatius really talks about the real world, preparing you for the real world. You're you're trying to graduate great citizens, correct? Right, and that's the part that, yeah. you know, what is, what is this clinician doing now? Sure. How did he take wrestling and help him in life? Yes. You know, did, did he take it to college and, 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 and be one of the uh, contributors where, you know, academically he was great? Right. But then, you know, was he socially great? You yes. know, was he able to leave college, uh, apply for a job or start a business? Right. You know, what what is he doing? You know, that's so important. Yes. Because re- as you know, wrestling is probably the greatest tool for these high school kids to use for discipline. Yes, it is. Dedication, but, hard work. And, and I don't, right. you know, and they, they have to, I think that it helps to let them know that is the important part of wrestling. You know, that you can use this as a tool. Sure. And as they graduate, then they're like, oh, yeah, coach, yeah, yeah, this is, I understand what you're talking about. Exactly. And, and it could be an aha moment at 25. Right. I remember, oh, my God, why wasn't I listening to that? You right. You know what I mean? Right. And, right. and you embody that, Mark. I mean, I know your history, and you did some amazing selfless things for your family. I mean, you're you're matriculating over to Ohio State. You're, you know, you're starting middle guard for the Buckeyes, and you're playing against Michigan, and you're you're the guy. You know, you're you're making all the accolades, and uh, you know, sad. Uh, you know, very tragic thing happens in your family, and you come back and basically take the reins and put your career on hold, and then you know, get get yeah. get get back to a situation where then you graduate from Ohio State. I mean, from John Carroll, and right. you know, move into a, a pretty pretty successful career as both a coach and as a business person. Yeah, I. You know, when when I talk to the youth kids or the high school kids, I say my my athletic career is kind of different. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's different. It did. It is. It is. But it made it me is. who I was. You know, yeah. when I was in high school, uh-huh. I wrestled just pretty much to prepare for football. Sure. I didn't like I didn't like wrestling in high school. Understood. You know, yeah. I yeah I used it as a uh, instrument to to better myself for football. Sure. But you had some success. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know, here comes senior year in high school. Yeah. I wanted to play football in college. Yeah. I had, a, you know, quite a few offers. Sure. But I had decided that, you know, I thought I could play at Ohio State. Okay. At Pitt or Alabama. And those were actually my three schools I narrowed it down to. All right. Uh, I uh, talked to Bear Bryant. Yes. And uh, he sent a letter to my coach. He said, he said, Mark, you know, we we love your ability. We just can't take a chance on a guy your size. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, over at Pitt, yeah. uh, they pretty much the same thing. Right. You know. Right. And uh, then Ohio State, here comes Woody Hayes. Yeah. yeah. Woody Hayes did not like walk-ons, by the way. Oh, no. So, yeah, I know. you know, mm-hmm. for better or worse, you know, sure. that, that, was his, yeah. that was his thing. Right. You're a scholarship football player, and mm-hmm. then... Then you had the walk-ons who were, you know, a, a different schedule. Yes. I mean, they actually had a different schedule. Yeah. So I... Tackling dummies to some it, degree, right? Oh, to, to a yeah. large degree. Right, if, exactly. If, if they were fortunate. Even allowed to. <laughs> no, seriously. If yeah, they were even fortunate enough to do that because he had ones against ones a lot, ones against twos, and sometimes yeah. scout team. Sure, sure. So I talked to Woody Hayes, and he said, Mark, he goes, you know, you know, I, I know you... I know you're a wrestler. Right. Uh, we, you know, the, the wrestling team in Ohio State had offered me a partial scholarship. Okay. So Coach Hayes said, uh, come on out for football. Okay. I said, really? Okay. That's yeah. what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. He goes, and I said, Coach, you know, I love football. Right. I want to play football. Right. I'll do whatever it takes to get on the field. I love that. He said, Mark, come out for football. I said, okay, when do I report? He said, you know, I'll do something for you. 
He said, report with the scholarship guys. Okay. Which for him was different. Sure. So I reported to Ohio State. First day when the scholarship guys report, we get our assignments for the dorms. Right. And I walk in and the guys are, uh, you know, they're, they're huge. Sure. <laughs> no doubt, <laughs> man. <laughs> they're <laughs> huge. And I immediately thought I made a huge mistake. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it, t- it took a whole yeah. Yeah. five seconds. I said, holy shit. You, know, you, <laughs> right. you walk into a room yeah. and, and the guys are, you know, a lot, lot taller, a yeah. lot larger. Yeah. Uh, they look like uh, grown men with beards. Right. <laughs> You know, yeah. It, so I immediately thought I made a mistake. Yeah. So, so I tactical error. <laughs> so, so I sat in a chair mm-hmm. and I uh, was contemplating uh, how I how, how I would let myself make this mistake. Wow, gotcha. Wow. So I decided uh, to stay there and see what happens. Sure. Our first meeting with Coach Hayes that night. Yeah. I realized I didn't make a mistake, even though. I okay. might have been outclassed athletically. Yes. I walk into this room. It was, it was huge, very large room. Yeah. Uh, easily held, you know, three, four hundred people. Wow. But we we had about a hundred guys, uh, you know, with the scholarship guys and then the, the staff. Okay. Everybody's joking around. Uh, you know, it was like I just sat in a chair because I didn't know anybody. Right. And I was already getting some of that freshman uh, orientation. Hazing, yes. Hazing. Yeah, you know. exactly right. Sure. Like, yeah. Oh, what are you, the kicker? Yeah. <laughs> yeah kickers right. don't reply. I, right. I go, no, I'm not the kicker. Yeah. Right. So I'm sitting there. Yeah. And it was like, uh, you know, these guys haven't seen each other all summer. Yes. All of a sudden, you can hear a pin drop. Okay. I'm getting goosebumps right now. Wow. You could hear a pin drop. Wow. I'm like, what? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Here comes Coach Hayes. Well, I'll be down darn. in the center of the room. I'll be darned. And it was it, it was silence. Yes. You know, how how do you make a hundred hundred yeah. joyful a- animals, guys, yeah, yeah. Animals yeah, yeah, silent yeah, yeah. in a second. So yeah. he's walking up. Yeah. He's walking up the center of the room slowly. Yes. And methodically. Okay. Because he's always thinking. He's a great thinker. All right. He gets up to the podium in the front of the room. says, Those bastards up north have been training all year to beat you on November 27th. I'm like, who's, who's these bastards? <laughs> 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 that nasty smell up north. <laughs> it, it, those That enemy up north. They're, they've been training all... You guys need to be focused. I'll be darned. Wow. Yes. And then he just went off about Michigan. I just knew... He's General George George S. Patton, right? I thought <laughs> I was watching Patton again. <laughs> exactly. You know, with the planes wow. flying over, exactly. shooting his the uh, six gun or six shooter. Yeah. So I immediately knew whether I was right or wrong, sure. making the right athletic choice. I knew immediately I was uh, I made the right uh, mentor uh, decision. Gotcha. He he was someone that change changes lives immediately yes. you know just yes. like that yes yes so it turned out as you, you spoke of earlier you know the, the tragic was my mother was basic my mother was dying at that moment at like that time right and I, it was yeah. that, that that was obviously hard of course I mean, yeah uh coach hayes found out about that somehow i don't really know how wow and uh in the room checks he would do the room checks wow <laughs> That is commitment. So, yeah, he would come. He came into mine, and he would sit there for like a half hour. And I, I didn't know at the time what it meant. Yes. I do know now. Yes, that it was life changing to have, you know, one of the greatest coaches of all time of any sport yes. sitting in my room. Yes, trying to help me because he knew I was hurting, even yeah. though I never told him. You yes. know, and I never even talked about it. He just, he just brought it up. That's about humanity. He's like, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. here's Coach Hayes. I'm yeah. Like, uh, you know, Mark, it's a, t- it's a tough time for you, you know. Like, yeah. You know, I was like, he just, he just completely changed my life at that moment. Wow. I realized no matter who you are, what the situation was, that you can change someone's life. Right. That's your blood time moment. So That's I, your blood time. That's your aha moment. That you just said, I, this is something 
that I really got to pay attention to. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. That changed my life forever. Uh, it was interesting because a week later uh-huh. in um, another banquet situation, Ohio right. State has a lot of benefactors. Of course, yes. You know, they show up to a banquet now. Lay down, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lay, lay, down, lay down pretty big checks. No, God. No, no. <laughs> yeah, have you seen their wrestling facility? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got some so, of my money. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, so, yeah. so, so he's, he's laying, you know, we go to this uh, facility. Right. Filled with benefactors. The big ones. Sure, the big boys. The big yeah. boys. Because the team's yeah. there. Woody Hayes, Coach yeah. Hayes is there. Yeah. You know, the coaches are there. Yeah. You and know. this is old school money. And this is old school these fundraising. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 these, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, they, it's back they, in the day. Yeah. So Coach Hayes is talking. Yeah. Oh. And he talks about this. Uh, you know, again, I'm still a little, I'm a little freshman, you know. Sure. I'm a little not sure where I fit in yet. Right. So Coach Hayes starts talking about this story of uh, one of our guys here was never going to play football again in his life. And I'm, everybody's like, what happened? Yeah, what, who? Yeah, yeah. This guy was jumped by a crowd of people and they tried to kill him. Oh, like, who, who is this? Oh, yeah. Oh, it turns out he was talking about me. I There's a story from... Holy cow. A story from the old St. Joe's sure. school. Now yeah. it's VASJ. Yeah, yeah. I was a pretty good high school athlete. Yes. And uh, I got jumped by about uh, 16... Oh of the, <laughs> and it turned out to be <laughs> they, they they wanted to take out a good athlete for some reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. I actually know some of them now. Sure. And and they've apologized. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, uh, my dad followed it up. He was pretty upset because they uh, hit me with right. a pipe. Oh they, my they, God. they tried to get me to the ground. Wow. And uh, I've told the story to the high school kids about. Sure. Know, uh, I was with three other guys, and wow. they. I, I knew what was going on. I said, "You guys leave. I got this." Oh <laughs> my like, god, that's uh, fantastic! And I told my guys, like you know, yeah. the high school kids, I say, "Well, when someone in that situation, you know, now you dial nine one one immediately." Yeah, right? exactly right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and yeah, and video it. <laughs> so I yeah, I get surrounded by this group, mm-hmm. and they wanted to take me out because I'm yeah. a good at. I don't who know who knows. Sure, yeah. So I get hit with this pipe. I Holy knew immediately God. it was pretty serious pipe. It turned out to be like, you know, the old days. Yeah. You wouldn't know anything about this, uh, Peter, but <laughs> <laughs> it was a lead-filled pipe. So oh, it was... Wow. No, at Beach, we didn't have any lead-filled pipes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we fought with insults. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who can so, get a better insult? So I didn't go down and right. uh, uh, according to the uh, gentleman who are, I've, I've talked to since then, they, you yeah. know, I... I you know, took out a good group of these guys, and I was had this ability to stay I have up. No and, doubt that you did, <laughs> <laughs> my so, friend. Yes. Please all come. Zoom, zoom, wow. zoom, zoom. Wow. So Coach Hayes brings up this story. Oh, I have no God. idea how he found out. That is wild. You know, my, maybe my high school coaches told him. Sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, it is lore. So yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. And then after that night, they found out who it was. The guys. The the. Yes, the you know, big dudes. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe yeah. there's some to this guy. Exactly right. So now comes first practice. Yes. And, you know, again, at Ohio State in those days and probably now, you have your your five star guys. Yes. Five star. Five star guys. Yes. Your four star guys. You know, they immediately get some instant credibility just based on stars. No doubt. And then the. Uh, lower star. Uh, mm-hmm. I, would, I would probably have been a zero star. I don't. Okay. I don't even know. Yeah, I'm put right in that little, little thing there. Right. So Coach Hayes has our uh, our uh, golden boy quarterback. He's going to go from a running style offense. Yes. Three yards in a cloud of dust, which was his thing. Absolutely. Brought in a freshman. Yep. I'm on. I made scout team. You sure. Know. Okay. I made. You know. I was able. Yeah. To you're like pumping bump. your chest. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you, you so know. I'm going against this guy. He played. Uh, I think he was a first round draft pick for uh, Pittsburgh. He was a first round draft pick for Pittsburgh. Kenny Fritz. Sure. Remember he that was, name? Yeah. He was. He it was, was good. He, he was tough. Yeah. So I had this weird wrestling move where I would jack him up and like yeah. throw him to the side and yeah, like he 
you know, he they would get mad and punch me and try to, you know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. they would very Stephen Neal of you. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> right? When he, yeah. So I yeah. did this, and then then our golden boy had the red thing. You can't hit him, but everybody. Yep. Uh, Arch, Arch Leister. Oh yeah, you know, number, so anyway. number, yeah, number one of the best. So he gamblers of all time. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So he, you know, he was a little arrogant. Yeah, of course. You know, on the scale of one to ten, probably a twelve. Okay, <laughs> just a little. So yeah, uh, on behalf of the all the defensive guys, I sacked him, which I'm you're not allowed to touch him. Gotcha. Sacked him hard and. Yeah. I, the quarterback coach came flying over to me, like, yeah. giving me uh, chest bumps, pointers in my oh, chest, course, like, yeah. you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're off the team. And yeah, right. I was like, oh, man, I really screwed up. Yeah, like, exactly. I, <laughs> I, so pulled, I, I, I pulled one. Yeah. So I'm going back, and, yeah. you know, yeah. I look over, and there's there's Coach Hayes yeah. just laughing. <laughs> he was just laughing. I knew I was all right. That is fantastic. I, I knew I was all right. Yeah, you had you had that insurance policy for sure in yeah. your back pocket. So the, I knew I was fine. Yep. Uh, so that was just kind of like how the uh, Coach Hayes, you know, formed. And, and I wasn't unique. He did that for everybody. Of course. You know, he was always a a coach that knew what was going on in your personal life. I love that. It was very hard to get in his doghouse. Like he had, you, know, you, you had to do something... Uh, you know, so over the top that, you know, it, it was very, it was very, very undeniable that you had to be in trouble. Yeah, very right. few guys right. were in his doghouse. Right. You right. know, but yeah. he always had a way of uh, getting guys and just molding, molding them into great men. And I know he, you know, his last game there, he, you know, yeah, did yeah. this to a Clemson guy. But, yeah, yeah, you know, nowadays with what's going on with some of these D1 coaches, yeah, you it's know, nothing. It, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's come on. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah. Well, with that thought, we're going to take a little break because this was compelling. <laughs> we're going to take a break and we'll come come back, but we got to hear some from our sponsors because this is how we're doing this. Well, thing, I want you right? to be paid, right? Absolutely, <laughs> got to get paid so we can. Do have I get paid? No, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> we'll be right back with Mark <laughs> Sullivan, Coach Zimroni for Blood Time. Defense Soap at DefenseSoap.com. In the midst of our current health crisis, we at Blood Time want to thank Guy and Gus Seiko and the team at Defense Soap as a beacon of our protection. Body wipes, skin cleansers, bars of soap, shower gels, and disinfectant tablets. All this and more as Defense Soap is on the front line of our protection. Thanks to the Seiko family and their team at Defense Soap. Check them out for all your protection needs during these precarious times. Defense Soap at DefenseSoap.com And we're back with Mark Sullivan, the head coach at St. Ignatius and uh, former Buckeye, former John, uh, John Carroll Blue Streak. And, you know, amazing stories about Woody Hayes. And uh, they don't make him like that anymore. No. You know, but he's made you. He's one of those guys that made you. And you also had another Hall of Famer that, you know, affected you and brought you into athletics again after the tragedy of, you know, what you what you relayed with your mother. At John Carroll. Amazing, amazing story. How did that affect you? And with that effect, what are you doing with it today in the real world? You know, oh, what great. did Tony mean to you? Great. Uh, so Tony DiCar- Tony DiCarlo, yes. who was at the time, uh, I went back to school to get my degree. Yeah. After I left Ohio State. Right. Coach DiCarlo was the wrestling coach who, again, was a great mentor of men who, you know, knew everything about your life. He would have been a CEO of a corporation. Yeah. I and mean, he, he didn't, he, yeah. It just wrestling had, just was basically his product. <laughs> right. He was just the best, he knew right? Everything about everybody. Yeah. So I show up at John Carroll and. He said, Mark. Yeah. Mark, you're going to wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you're going to wrestle. You're going to do both, Mark. You're going to do both. I go, well. You're going to football and You know, wrestle I wrestled that. at Ohio State my freshman year. Okay. And uh, so my el- eligibility has probably run its course. Yeah. This is four years later. Yeah. He said, well, well in Division Three, there's a, a clause where you have four years of eligibility regardless of when you wrestle. I'll be darned. 
That's it all. Great. Okay, let me think about it. Yeah. And then Coach DiCarlo being Coach DiCarlo yes. gave me 35 reasons why I should. Exactly right. <laughs> and I'm one of the best salesmen ever. I, you know, I couldn't come up with many negatives. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you had to do the Ben Franklin close, right? So, yeah. so I went back. Okay. Wrestled for Coach DiCarlo. All right. You were around at the time. I was. I, I think I coached you one year, and that was the that was and, and that Nick D'Angelo had won the year before at ninety. Oh right, yeah. Right, you right. know, so you had some unbelievable drill partners oh, there. I forget, right. Plus I, Sal D'Angelo was injured, but he came back. So yeah, I right. had to bring up them just because they're close family friends from when we were little guys. Sure, sure. You know, Nick won national championship at one ninety. Yep. Took second twice. He was in the finals three yeah. years. Unbelievable. Took, and then Sal. It, uh, heavyweight, who yes. was uh, all returning All American, who's coming back from injury. Right. And coach, I refereed that challenge match between him and Paul Redinger, Redinger when he popped out his hip. Oh. He goes, "It's out! It's out!" I go, "What's out?" He goes, "My hip." I'm like, "Oh my god! I've never seen that before." Yeah. You know, and they were concerned because of bone growth. Right. You know what I mean? But thank God he came back and did. I think he took second in the nation, right? Yeah. Or did he was no, he wasn't I, in the well, nation. He, I think he took second. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so. Coach DiCarlo says, right. well, Mark, why don't you wrestle 177? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh, dear God. I said, he said, we'll have you, Nick, and Sal. Yeah, yeah. I said, I don't think there's any way you could make 177. That's a negative. <laughs> <laughs> That's a negative response. I think I weighed 215 at the yeah, time. There's no way. Uh, Plus, you were probably about 5% body fat at yeah, 215. Yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, and of course, Coach right. uh, DiCarlo, being Coach DiCarlo, he, he he convinced me to think about it for a couple of days. Right. Yeah. So I, I I did make it down from two fifteen to about two fourteen after, <laughs> after a couple of weeks. And uh, two fourteen and a half. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, made, he he decided that yeah it's not going to happen. Right. He said, okay. Right. You're going to have to wrestle off Nick or Sal. Yeah. I said, well, I can't make one ninety and yeah. You know these these guys are great family friends. It'll be sure. it'll be like wrestling a brother. It was, yeah, so, I can't do it. Yeah, so I ended up wrestling off. I did wrestle off. Sal. Okay, okay. And it was, you know, it, to this day I did not enjoy that wrestle off because yeah, yeah. I knew I was going to beat him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't make it a high score. Right. Uh, and and Sal to this day kind of jokes about it. Goes, <laughs> That's right. I go, Sal. You know, I really didn't enjoy wrestling yeah, off yeah. back in the day. He goes, right. He goes, what about me? I was coming back from injury. I go, I, go, I didn't make it a high score. You know, exactly. what, can, what can I say? <laughs> Being magnanimous. What can I say? I'm sorry. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So I went on, you know, as you sure. know, I yeah. made it to the finals. Yes, you did. I lost in overtime. And the guy that I wrestled was a better wrestler at heavyweight than me. Okay. He was he was good. He went, he went on to wrestle in Division One that year. Right. That's took, back in the day when yeah, they could. Yeah. And took yeah. seventh. Wow. So he was a Division One All American that year. He was right. like six three, six four. I'm five nine. Right. Two sixty five. Sure. I was two fifteen. Yep. And he was. Yep. He was, he was strong. Just, he was. Just, he was a strong guy. Yeah. Gotcha. So so he beat me in overtime, and, and he was a little. I would have had to you know wrestle above my size and ability at that point. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm ready for second semester. I get a call. Yeah. Iowa Hawkeye Club. Okay. Olympics is, are coming up. I said, uh, oh, well, what do you guys want? What's up? Yeah. yeah. And they said, well, Co uh, Coach Dan Gable wants you to train in Iowa. I'll be tired. Wow. I was like, why me? Yeah. Well, we heard you're a smaller heavyweight and you're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I go, I don't know. It, it, what does it entail? He said, well, it was someone on their staff. Yeah. I call me and I said, "What does it entail?" Well, we have the guys, your training partners. There's two of them. They're ranked number one in the world, each of them at their respective weight. Okay. He said, uh, "You know, we'll come out there and uh, you know we'll we'll you train with them. We'll put you up." I sh I show up at Iowa. I decide I'm going to go. It was like a nine month stint. Of Holy cow! 
They said Coach Gable, Coach Gable is the Olympic coach for freestyle that year. Yeah. Um, you got your training partners, right? Number one in the world. And, you know, we'll take care of all the entry fees and the sponsorships were a little different than you. That you didn't get money like now. Right. Now you get cash in your pocket. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which you it's, should. Yeah. I mean, to represent the United States. Doggone it. Yes. Thank God they do that so there's no more fox catcher, right? Yeah. Oh, God. So I look at that. Yeah, you know that's another story for another oh, another dude, day. No, please, the fox yeah, catcher guy he tried yeah. to recruit me. Um, oh I, told, I, I told him no. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. That is another story. We'll have to have you back season three. <laughs> that's uh, absolutely. He was a little. He was a little too weird for me, and it yeah. turns out that my uh, your instincts were one hundred my thousand percent on. Oh my! It was God. hard to turn the guy down because sure the money the money yeah absolutely. he was in a big cash in the pocket yep everything you know all the gear. Every, everything. Everything. And that's how we lured guys in. Sure. Obviously. Of course. Yeah. So I ended up having uh, Coach Gable uh, for my uh, my freestyle coach. Magnificent. You know, I didn't make it. My training partners. Okay. The, I lost to the one. Uh, he went on to be a gold medalist. Who was that? Uh, Lou Bannock. Oh, and, and, just, a, just a piker. <laughs> yeah. Eddie, oh Eddie and God. Lou. Wow. Lou is phenomenal. Yeah. The, you know, he was the 220. He was like a lightweight as right. far as his movement yep and his uh his win his sure. endurance they had some natural endurance they were wrestling as hard at the end of the match as they were at the beginning of the match and right and it, and that's just something that you're born with Up that, that yes. natural endurance yes you know yes. you have two guys that train oh, please two guys yeah. that train at the same level absolutely the white twitch the yeah. red twitch muscles and yes. they had a mixture of both where they they were just going like God given again. stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah. They were yeah I, I interviewed Kerry McCoy. Oh. He, you know, the last yeah. episode of season one. Amazing human being, right? Yeah. Amazing. You know, Ed Ruth, same t- type of guys, right? right? You right. know, just, you just can't, how, did, how do you do that? Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, uh, so that's not a bad guy to lose to. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was funny because my first day at the in Iowa, mm-hmm. I was wrestling with Eddie. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I have a, uh, asthma that only comes out when I exert as at a high level. Which okay. Okay. Training with Eddie Bannock at a That's as high as level <laughs> as you're gonna get, my brother. So, so that's coming out. So I'm yeah. tr- I'm turning blue and yeah, yeah. trying to you know, doing the zombie motions. You know, oh, I'm yeah. I'm still standing and doing my mo- Yeah. And uh Coach uh, uh Gable Gable comes up. Mm-hmm. He goes he goes, Geez Mark. Yeah. He goes, You could be a good wrestler if you ever got in shape. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. No sympathy. And I and I yeah. knew yeah. you don't tell Coach Gable, yeah. Oh, I have asthma. Yeah. You don't say that. Yeah. You don't you don't yeah, exactly. you don't you don't give me I said, Thanks, coach, I'm gonna work on it. Yes, That's, yeah, you know. exactly right. Yeah. So uh moving how how do I uh you know, use my experience with Well you had so many unbelievable. I mean, you you're talking about three magnificent human beings, Gable, Hayes, DiCarlo. You couldn't help but being a pretty good guy. <laughs> right. And, you know, I mean, really think about that, Mark. It's almost like you this confluence of events that just wouldn't allow you to be anybody but Mark Sullivan is today. I, I Does that had, make sense? I think I had to take it into a, a position of giving it back. Yes. To the kids I coach. Yes. But you also pay it forward, too. I mean, you're yeah. telling these kids to do it as well. Right. You know, in right. some fashion, right? right? Yeah. So I use my, I, you know, you can call it old school tactics. You can call it whatever you want. But right. what I took from these guys, you know, I, I try to give it back to the kids, you know. And in the meantime, you know, they don't want, they don't want just an athlete telling right. them what to do. Right. In high school. Right. You know, I got my undergraduate from John Carroll. I went back, got my MBA. Listen, I, I know that MBA very well because I was on the panel. Right. graded your, <laughs> your presentation and it was fantastic over at... Uh, uh, Myers uh, University. Right. Absolutely. I remember. With me and Phil Wank. Remember oh, Phil Wank? Yes. And he, had, yes. he was your professor, wasn't yes. he? Yes. Yes. So, yeah, Phil was a client of mine at the time. And it, good friend. Yeah. 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 You know, that it was a difficult curriculum as far as hours. Sure. You know, when you're working all day and you have yeah. kids. Yeah. And then you go to school from... Well, you were a bailiff, weren't you, at the time? I was working in the... Uh, right, in the court system. Yeah, Cleveland. so that's a lot of work. My God. So, you, you know, you're going... All of that, and then you go to school from I think it was like five thirty to ten fifteen or something. I like remember, two, I twice remember, a week. Yeah, I remember. I was on the panel and had to be like eight thirty at night, nine o'clock at night. 
right? You know, I I think I went to more classes in two weeks there than I did at Ohio State my whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't talk about that. <laughs> we won't talk about that. So, so yes, yeah, I was so a good you, test taker. I get it. I get it. Yes, where we all. So, um, yeah. So, so you get this MBA. You you go into coaching, and you're coaching at one of the greatest high schools really in the country. Yeah. I, you know, I rolled into that position. I had a friend of mine who asked me to coach as an assistant. Sure. Several times. Okay. Uh, maybe 30 times. Okay. <laughs> so, so just 30. Yeah. So about 20 years ago, yeah. I know I'm, I'm only a Catholic guy, East side guy. Yep. I got this, uh, individual who I respect mm-hmm. asking me to coach, coach, coach at St. Ignatius. Yeah. I'm like, All right. I'll do it one year. Right. Right. So I show up, assistant coach. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed the climate. Yes, you know yeah. the, the, yeah. the what they're doing. I had enough exposure to see what the teachers were doing, and you know, there's a lot of schools around here. You know, they, they work on that that core of uh, you know the spirituality, the education. Yeah, the foundation, the man you for know. others. You know, Absolutely. all that. Yep. And they might call it different things, mm-hmm. but there's schools around here that do that. Yes. So at the end of the year. I told my wife, I said, this was a great experience. Really enjoyed it. Uh-huh. He resigns. Oh, yeah. So, okay. I get a call from San Ignatius. You know, we'd like you to be the head coach. I'll be darned. I said, I'll, I will I will do it for a year or two just to. Right. right. Until you find someone. Well, 19 years later, I'm still the head coach. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I want to talk to you. You know, because you, you've graduated some amazing human beings, right? So in 19 years, you've, you've got some guys that are now 40, almost, right. right? I've got some guys that are now almost 60. I hate to say that because I coached in the late 70s when you were in high school. Uh, it was my first first time coaching. But I remember a story about, I want to get into that story about some of those guys, you know. But I remember a story that I was involved with you, and I want to tell it. To the audience, yes, about when you were wrestling against Trenton State. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they had a real street kid. Yeah, right. At heavyweight, who was not bad, was he wasn't great, but he wasn't bad. He was, you know, he was good enough. And they were ranked number one in the country at the time, and you guys were ranked number two. Yeah. And I was the referee. Yeah, right. <laughs> All 145 yeah. pounds of me, <laughs> and it came down to you guys for the last match, but it didn't come down to the match. Because you guys are kicking their ass. Yeah. I think it was like 21 to 2. Yeah. I think they didn't even have a, they, they maybe got a tie. And you are just putting a hurt on this guy. You're right. throwing him all over the mat. And, of course, he's a, he's kind of a punk. Yeah. Well, he's not kind of. He's a punk. Yeah. So he starts leading with the head. Yeah. So I hit him for one. I hit him for two. I call you guys in. I go, dude, don't lead with that head again because I'm going to hit you and you're, you know. He leads again, and you are on him, man. <laughs> you are on him like those 16 guys yeah. on him, right? And I'm like, I don't know where I was, man. And and it was melee. Yeah. And so if finally we finally control you, <laughs> and we fi- finally finish it, okay? And he's walking off, and, the, and I'll never forget this because – God, God rest his soul. Casey Bucala watched oh. every match is in the in the front row, and he's flipping all the priests off. <laughs> yeah. But he's being pulled off by the cops, you know. And you're like, oh my god! And you ended up winning because I disqualified him. You ended up winning twenty seven to two. You're right, go right. blue streaks. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to get that story in, but uh, so you're part of my history, which I'll never forget that story. But Mark, tell me, I'm going to leave the audience with one or two stories about somebody that's that's graduated, that's done some extraordinary things in the marketplace. And then leave the audience with some words of encouragement during this time of fear. Sure. If you sure. could, please. You know, I, I would, you know, it's easy for me to tell you success stories. Sure. Of kids that went on to college. Okay. Uh, the last count, I think there were nine nine uh, doctors or people in uh, med school. Holy cow. You know, these these are people that at the highest level of their yes. profession. Yes. Uh, countless there's attorneys out there sure uh, we had some military guys we had a run of guys going to the military schools who i'm very proud of awesome you know the, the one wrote me a letter and you know you, you you get choked up just reading what he has to say i know what you mean it was an individual that was from a somewhat broken home okay and he knew he wanted to go into the military he went into west point 
Yes. As, as you know, West Point, it's really yeah. hard to get into. Unbelievable. Yeah. So he gets in after a year of their, let's say, a, I don't want to call it junior high, but it, it, it uh, not um, junior college. It, there's like a one year. Yeah, a remedial sp- thing to like get a, everything a up to stone. speed. Yeah, up, up to speed. Yep. So yep. he gets in, person in the military. He's going to be a career guy that, you know, Crazy. super very high uh, ranking. He wrote me a letter just basically saying, Coach Sullivan, you know, I was not the best wrestler. Right. Thank you for not letting me quit. I love that. Uh, when I got into West Point, it was easy. <laughs> after after wrestling practices and what we went through, yes, you know, I, I had no problem making through any anything they asked of me physically. I love this. He said the mental part was easy for me. I, I just look back to all the struggles I had because I was not a good wrestler. Right. And he detailed just you know his his path through yes. West Point and what he's doing now and. You know, it just it struck me that you it's not always the state champs that are our success stories. They're the ones we talk about. Without question. Without question. They're the ones that, you know. No, this is what blood time is, is because I'm that guy. Yeah. I was the worst guy in the team as a freshman. And because of Coach I, never gave up on me. You know? Yeah. So, so I get it. Yeah. So we have all these kids that they stay out for four years. Sure. Sometimes it might be one year. You know, the kids nowadays, right, if right. they wrestle for one year, it changes their lives. Absolutely. 100%. I tell guys, if you're coming off of wrestling, yeah. my requirement is you stay for the whole practice, you stay for the whole year. Right, right. And at the end of the year, hopefully the next year. Yes. At the end of one year, yeah. they say sometimes, there's no way in hell I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I say, yeah, yeah. I, I say, thank you for trying. Right. You did it. Yeah, you did. You wrestled all that's, year. That's your personal best. You know that. That's your, that's this, how you left it. On don't the take back. this as a negative. Exactly. It was too hard for you, yeah. and you're going on other stuff. Right. Uh, don't keep. No, just don't tell me that I, I can't do it because my mother wants me to study more, or or because I have right. this. Right. I said, don't give me these excuses that you're not wrestling because of these other things. Right. If it's too hard, just tell us. Exactly. Be honest with yourself. Yeah. And I, and I congratulate you for trying. So there's so many wrestlers out there that are at different levels that, and there's so many really cool coaches out there that, uh-huh. that just you know can develop these kids into you know uh, citizens that are just so helpful. You know, it's and hard. so so those are amazing, amazing points, Mark. So if we can put a bow on this wonderful conversation, I wish I had you know <laughs> two hours, three hours to discuss it with you, but. I don't. <laughs> right. I wish I did. And I'd love to have you back in because yeah. these stories are fantastic. Leave the audience with just some words of encouragement during during these times. It's difficult. You know, I, I am somewhat of a, the kids call me a germaphobe okay. five, five years ago, 10 years ago, yes. last two years ago. Yes. Now with this pandemic. Yeah. They're like, how do you do it? Yeah. How do you yeah. do it? Right. Well, and as someone that is somewhat of a germaphobe, yep. I have to be there. Right. I clean the room every day. I spray the walls. I spray the lockers. I get it. I wear a mask. I wear gloves in practice. I get I, it. I, I get it. I have a fan in the in the door. I get it. So I'm yeah. trying to get these kids in the room. If if we're shut down tomorrow, mm-hmm. they had a chance to do something. Yes. What I'm telling the kids: enjoy what you can do today, because tomorrow it might not be there. Boy, is that the truest words. I echo those every day. Beautiful words. We had a wrestle-off last week. Okay. Usually they're like, oh, God, they're the biggest pain. Just right. because it takes right. practice time. Uh, the, the kids are oh, yeah. distracted, emotional. These were, I loved it. It was wonderful. I yeah. go, guys, you're getting varsity matches in this wrestle-off. Exactly. I said, enjoy it. Because it might be the only ones you have all year. Exactly. We had some wrestle-offs that were just gritty and, and guys give it 100 percent and right it was a wonderful experience i said whatever we do here yeah. enjoy it yeah and and the people that can't show up because they have elderly uh parents yes. or yes. grandparents yes. So there's At some risk. some yeah. kids that cannot come to practice i get it i've had i've lost three yes oh yep wow because of that yep yeah yep. it's yep. so we're we're de- dealing with something very serious my son mark was a fourth-year resident in New York City last year. They pulled okay. him, pull him off his rotation, put him in the emergency room. Of course, yeah. So yeah. he was having people dying on the gurney. Oh, 
horrible. So it's it's not fake. It's no, not, it's not. It's it's, it's not. It's um, not. My both my sisters had it, and it was not pleasant. They're fine now. But yeah, it's it was not pleasant. It's it's a tough, difficult situation that we have to, um, you know, pray for the people that have passed. Yes, their families. Yes. And there's some people that had it, and they have long-term effects that they don't even know. I know. I mean, there's some things physically that they will never recover from. Right. So it's not like you get it, and if you recover, you beat it. Yep. Yeah. You don't. You don't beat it. Right. So um, I'm waiting for the um, vaccine. Va- vaccine. Yeah. Uh, I, hopefully, you know, this thing get dis- diminishes, diminishes a little bit. You yeah. know, it gets a little better. It's tough. I don't. You know, there's really nothing other than. Do what you can do. Yeah. Enjoy the day, right? Enjoy the day. Yeah, the days in front of you. All right, yeah. and, and then uh, have a good support group. Yeah, because there's some people at home. All right, I have a couple of wrestlers that aren't allowed to basically leave the room. You know, they're home. They're online right now. Right, homebound. So they're yeah. online doing school. Yeah, and they're not really allowed to go to practice. You know, let's think of them. Yeah. It's it's getting a little stressful for for families. You know? I know it, my parents. I haven't seen my parents in six weeks. You know, yeah. prior to that, you know, we were able to see them, but then there, you know, when it first hit, another three months, I didn't see them, and yeah. I'm missing out on it. My 84 to 85 year old parents, right. which I, you know, it it hurts my heart, but I, at least I get to talk to them or sure. FaceTime them, you know. But well, I love these words, Mark, and I love you as a coach, and you're just a great dude. And I thank you for coming in and of sharing course. these times with us and yeah. sharing these words of wisdom. And, you know, you echo Coach Urbis, never give up on a kid. That right. was the big thing that he said um, to us when he was here. Well, good luck to St. Ignatius. Good luck to you. Stay healthy. Stay straight. Stay safe. <laughs> stay safe. <laughs> stay healthy. Stay courageous. Thank you so much, Mark Sullivan. Thank you. Thank you. This is Coach Cimarroni for Blood Time. Love to all. Stay safe, stay strong, stay courageous. This is Coach Cimarroni for Next Level Continuing Education. Next Level brings unique education to real estate professionals and real estate investors on how to get money effectively and efficiently into real estate investments. Next Level Continuing Education has ditched the traditional continuing education platform. Gone are the days of listening to boring content in a stuffy classroom setting. Come jump on a Zoom call whenever you find it comfortable and learn how to expand your real estate portfolio. Next Level CE brings unique content across Ohio and the Midwest to teach real estate investors how to become their own bank using the infinite banking concept to acquire more properties quickly. Call Ryan M. Miller, the CE Specialist, at 330-933-8231 or click on the link in our show notes. That's Ryan M. Miller, CE Specialist, 330-933-8231 or our show notes. The link is where you go. Thank you. I want to share my thought of the day with you. Spread love and always leave where you were better than before you arrive. This is Dominic Abinator. You've just heard another episode of the Blood Time Podcast. Check out more at maverickpodcasting.com.